Good morning, everybody. Thursday, and hope you're ready to start the day with God's Word. Um, we're going to sing God Has Spoken by His Prophets, number 583, if you've got a hymn note. God has spoken by His prophets, spoken His unchanging word. Each from age to age proclaiming God the one, the righteous Lord. In the world's despair and turmoil, Confirmaker holds us fast. God is King, His throne eternal. God the first and God the last. God has spoken by Christ Jesus, Christ the everlasting Son, brightness of the Father's glory, with the Father ever one. Spoken by the Word incarnate, God of God before time was, light of light to earth descending, He reveals our God to us. God is speaking by His Spirit, speaking to our hearts again, in the ageless Word declaring His own message now as then. Through the rise and fall of nations, one sure faith yet standing fast. God abides the earth, not changing. God the first and God the last. And a reading from Acts to chapter 11, finishing up the chapter. Now in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So um, we've wrapped up the, the Jewish Christians versus Gentile Christians theme, it seems like. And uh, the, the church is unified and moving forward and preaching the gospel and people are coming to faith. Uh, it, particularly in Antioch, the ministry to the Gentiles is expanding and growing. And there's an unexpected um, bonus, an unexpected development in this ministry to the Gentiles, that, that the Gentile church now turns around and supports the Hebrew church, the Jewish church. Remember in Jerusalem at the time of the, when the, when the deacons were first chosen, uh, Acts 6 or 7 uh, with Stephen, that the, uh, the Jewish believers were receiving benefits, but the poor among the Gentiles were, were not being treated equally or fairly. And so then they chose all those uh, um, deacons who had come from the, the Gentile background. Oh, now it's the other way around. Now the Gentiles are, are blessing the Jewish believers in Jerusalem and that area. But it's, what's funny here, it says, a prophet or prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch and they tell that there's going to be a great famine over all the world. When, you know, we've done this, doing an offering for uh, a, a natural disaster. Something takes place, a hurricane or an earthquake, and there's people in need. And, and so we'll say, hey, you can call this number or text here and to donate to, to send relief to these people who are in need. And we do that, right? But we don't say there's going to be a famine in such and such a country and, and we're asking for your money. <laughs> I wonder if you would be as eager because 
um, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting, it's much easier to raise disaster relief money than to raise money for any other thing, uh, buildings or, or anything else. People immediately, uh, without, without having to give a lot of thought, immediately dig in their wallets and give something for disaster relief because we have these, these pathetic photographs. We have photographs of real suffering and oh, what's going on and, and it moves your heart and you say, I've got to do something and you give. But the, the prospect of future suffering, we're not so quick to support that. That reminds me of this. You know, my uh, trusty uh, um, tape measure, I use this all the time, but I also have this. This is a, not a tape measure. This is a laser measuring device. And, and it points to the other side of the room and measures the distance from there to here. And, and you know, I, I think it's probably quite accurate. But I don't trust it as much. <laughs> Every time I use this, I'm gonna measure it. it's so silly. I don't know why I have it because, um, oh, and we, we got it when I was doing floors and, and measuring and wanting to get things in line straight and so on. It was a little quicker than having to go back and forth across the room. But generally when I, when I use this, I come back and I verify it with this <laughs> because this I can see the, the line and exactly how many inches and feet it is. But, but this, I can't see where the numbers are, you know, how it got from there to here and whether it's really right or not. We don't trust predictions of the future. We don't trust measurement at a distance. And, and yet there are things we know, we know, I mean, absolutely know about the future. You know some people who who without Christ will have a, a future that if you could picture it, you would say, wow, I'm gonna dig out my wallet and support that cause. You know, I've gotta help there. If, if you see photos from a natural disaster in some place, you want to help with food. But if you could see those same people without Christ, if you could even see into the present and, and what, what their hearts, what their lives are like without Christ, you would say, wow, I've got to, I've got to make, I've got to do something. Give, serve, volunteer. I've got to do something to help that situation. Do you know all the worst things in the world are invisible to us? People's hearts. Uh, what happens behind those doors in an abortion clinic that looks just like a storefront, you know, like all these other places. Um, <clears throat> my one daughter in uh, studying in Austria said it was the creepiest thing to go into a shopping mall with her friends and there's an abortion clinic there next to the ice cream place. We need to have eyes to see even the things that are distant from us. To trust God's word, that our help is needed there. These these Gentiles, these new Christians, these baby Christians, they heard the word of God that that there was going to be need in Jerusalem, and they began gathering their help before it was needed. <clears throat> we need to do that also, even before we see the need. We need to be looking at what God has given us and saying, what can we do for the people in our community uh, to support the ministry of our congregation and reaching out to bring more children to our school to hear the gospel, to, to reach out into other communities outside of us? What can we do? Heavenly Father, why is it that we need to see we need to see the photographs. We know the truth already. Your prophets have told us. Your son Jesus has told us himself what will be the end of those who do not trust in, in him.
him. Lord, help us to bring those who are distant close. Help us to bring those whom you love near to you. Grant that we would use everything we have and all the moments of our life to that end. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor <clears throat> and give you peace. Amen.